Hey, Carlos Lago with Edmonds here. It's been one year of ownership with our Tesla Model Y performance performance. What's it been like? Do we still like it? Would we still recommend it? How many drag races has it won? And what's in store next? We're going to talk about all that in this video. Before we do, give us a like, comment, and we'd also appreciate a subscription if you enjoy this kind of content. Also, check out some of the links below to learn more about our long-term test program. Also, visit edmunds.com slash sellmycar to get an instant cash offer on your car. As a quick reminder, we pre-ordered this Model Y Performance in March 2019. It had a starting price of $61,000. Now that price includes destination, but not incentives and rebates because those change depending on where you live. As for options, we checked the boxes for the no-cost performance upgrade, thus the performance performance name, red paint, and full self-driving capability, which at the time cost five grand. That brought the as-tested price of this car to $68,700 thereabouts. Now, Tesla continuously changes prices, range, specs, feature availability, and so on for all of its vehicles. Today's Model Y performance at the time of this recording costs a little bit less in terms of base price, but the price of full self-driving capability has doubled. If you were to build this exact same car today, it would cost about $72,000. So what's it been like? It's been fine. Uh, compared to other Teslas we've owned previously, this one has spent considerably less time at the service department undergoing repairs. In fact, no time at all. So that's good, but that doesn't mean it's been problem-free either. We'll talk about that later. To answer the big question though, do we still like it? Would we recommend it? The answer is a not very helpful, it depends. Let's start with the good. This thing is so goddamn quick. For evidence, just check our growing repository of drag race videos. So far, its kill list includes a Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, a BMW X3M, a Mercedes-Benz GLC 63 S AMG, a Porsche Taycan, and even our own Ford Shelby GT500. Kind of incredible, right? What's more impressive is some of those cars are certainly quicker than the Model Y at the test track. So what happened? Well, those cars, when they are quicker, it's only when you get the variables right, when the temperature is right, when the surface is right, when the driver skill is right, when the launch control is right, then you can extract all that additional performance. The Tesla doesn't need any of that. All you do is hit the go pedal and you go, and that's what happens in the real world. That shows up in drag races and that's fun, sure, but it also makes for better power on a freeway on-ramp, more control when you need to make a pass on a two-lane road or when you need to squeeze in traffic somewhere. It gives you more tools and the ability to do that. And it doesn't require any special drive modes or launch control or anything. And it actually can also kind of be a problem if you have impulse control issues. But it isn't just the performance. As we called out earlier when we first reviewed this, this is basically a Model 3 that has more interior space and more cargo volume, and that makes it a more functional family vehicle. But beyond that functionality and space, there's also the endless doodads and features and entertainment in this display screen. That's fun for the whole family. Whether it's the whoopee cushion, the sketch pad, the video game emulator, or even the digital audio workstation. stuff's a lot of fun to mess with when you're waiting for the charge to finish or when you're waiting for, I don't know, your camera crew to finish setting up a shot. Why does it take so long? Romance mode. The biggest advantage though of Tesla ownership continues to be access to the supercharger network, which to date remains the easiest and most consistent charging solution you'll find when you're driving long distances. We've tested a number of EVs that rely on third-party charging networks for the same duty that the supercharger serves. And often we found these chargers difficult to locate in unfamiliar areas. The biggest headache you'll find at a supercharger network is waiting for an open plug on a busy holiday. So what didn't we like? Well, these 21 inch wheels and the suspension they rode in on. I was admittedly soft on the ride quality when we first bought and reviewed this car, but after 9,000 miles, ride quality continues to be the biggest complaint our team has with our Model Y performance. Are we whining? Maybe a little bit, but here's the thing. These 21 inch wheels are heavy 
and they create big impacts over bumpy roads. How big? Well, our test team manager, Jonathan, found out as he was driving over a bumpy road while coincidentally rolling up the windows. The bumps were enough to actually trigger the anti-pinch built into the windows so they don't crush your fingers when they're roll being rolled up. That's how big the impacts are. Now, you might expect that kind of ride quality with a high-performance vehicle of some kind, but I don't with a luxury compact SUV. In fact, I don't even expect that ride quality with sports cars anymore because I swear our long-term Corvette rides better than this. What else? Well, then there's all of Tesla's missing promises that continue to grow in terms of list, like full self-driving capability. It's reactions to what's happening around it, at least what it perceives happening around it, are so different than what I would do and what is actually happening. It's an option we paid five grand for and now cost 10 grand, if you'll remember, uh, and it doesn't exist yet, doesn't work. Uh, Tesla continues to roll out updates and features that are always in beta. Currently in beta, navigate on autopilot, also in beta, and summon is also in beta. Navigate on autopilot, for example, attempts to take control of the vehicle while you're on the freeway, managing speed and uh, where you're at in the lane, and lane changes as well. There's traffic and stop sign recognition that will slow you down when it senses a stoplight or a red light. The problem is none of this stuff works, uh, in my hands at least. I frequently have to intervene on the steering wheel because the car has difficulty tracking lanes in a smooth way, or it applies the brakes or slow downs unnecessarily without reason. And I can't make sense of it. I live in LA. I drive this car in LA. This isn't the sticks. This is major freeways used by tens of thousands of people every day. If there's any place where it should work, it should probably be here. And it's more confusing because I see a lot of Tesla enthusiasts praise uh, how the car behaves in their hands. And I wish we were having that experience with ours too. And I also see a lot of people using this stuff in a really dangerous way. Like not sitting in the driver's seat, and I find that scary. Call me a Luddite if you haven't already in the comments below. And if you're a Tesla owner and enthusiast who enjoys these features and they work great for you, that's awesome. I wish we were having the same experience, but I'm happy for you. My concern though is for people who are shopping for their first Tesla and considering some of these features and how they work in application. And the answer is sometimes they don't. Tesla clearly says these things are in beta. You have to opt in to use them. They show on their pricing that full self-driving capability doesn't really exist yet. The challenge is when you've spent five to $10,000 on that option, you're gonna wanna play with the features when they show up. You just have to remember, these cars don't drive themselves. They may one day, they don't right now. This is emergent technology that you can't blindly trust and you shouldn't do stunts with them just for social media clicks. How about recalls? Well, there are two open recalls for the Tesla Model Y. One is for inoperative trailer brake lights and the other is for loose bolts on the front upper control arms. That's right, loose bolts on critical suspension components. Fortunately, neither apply to our car and that suspension issue seems to apply to only a small number of Model Ys. Also, if you've been watching the news lately, you'll see Tesla's been making some rather eye-opening claims about what constitutes wear items in its conversations with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, you know, the federal agency that oversees recall efforts. That's a topic for another video and definitely worth further research. When it comes to maintenance, well, there hasn't really been any because, you know, this is an EV and there's nothing here to maintain. That said, this car hasn't been totally issue free. Small things have cropped up, like panel gaps that appear to get worse over time maybe, the back seats have developed quite a rattle, and they're also no longer evenly aligned next to each other. I just noticed too that our passenger fog light appears to have gone into winter hibernation mode. Come on buddy, come on out. It's time, I need you for the fog. Let's talk more about these wheels. This is our fault, but these wheels are magnets for curbs. Yeah, drive more carefully and all that. We do when we're in our Corvette. Gonna fly this time. Come on! For our GT500, those are special cars. Let's face it, this is a family SUV that does family SUV stuff. It's not gonna receive the consistent level of caution that we're gonna give to cars that we don't drive as frequently, and that's just the honest truth. I take blame for the first damage on these wheels. I thought I dropped a tire just a little bit 
uh, while driving up the curvy road. And no, I destroyed the tire and put a big chunk in the wheel itself. After 9,000 miles of use and this vehicle going through a lot of hands, these wheels have rash all over the rims. Look kids, tire sidewall isn't just good for ride quality, it also protects you from certain embarrassment too. What? It can't be any worse, can it? Maybe I, should, maybe I should do my eyebrows next. Carlos, it looks terrible. Shh. Last thing about wheels and tires, uh, we did get a flat at one point, which gave us the opportunity to interact with Tesla's service department, and that actually went really well. Uh, the editor who noticed the flat, the car was at his house, he called the service department, they offered him the ability to tow the Tesla to the service department, they would give him a loaner wheel and tire while they repaired that wheel and tire, or he could wait the following day for a mobile service department to show up, which he did because it was at home. Mobile tire service showed up, patched the wheel, and was gone in a couple hours, and I think it cost like 78 bucks, so a really easy process. Has anything else gone wrong? Yes! The screen on our Model Y has died multiple times in the hands of different editors. Uh, the people who've had it happen to them just say the screen just slowly fades to black and you lose all functionality. Of course, everything is controlled through this screen. The way you restart it is you pull over, foot on the brake pedal and hold these two buttons for about 10 seconds and after a while this screen comes back to life. You just have to power cycle it much like you do your phone, your PlayStation, your Xbox, your router, your modem, your Apple TV, your Roku, your Amazon Fire, your PC, your tablet, your laptop. <sighs> Getting back to cars. We've experienced a lot of screen failures with modern cars. As unfortunate as it is to say, it's just a fact of life. As these things grow more capable and more powerful and more sophisticated, there just seems to be the higher chance that they're gonna restart. One of our biggest frustrations with Tesla, I should say, is that when this screen dies, when you have to restart it, it takes all the controls with it. There's no physical controls to rely on. You can't control your media, you can't control your uh, air conditioning, your seat heating, your nap, all that's gone. So when that happens, you have to pull over and do that restart. And that can be a major annoyance when you're just trying to commute to work. How have the consumption and range been? Well, the EPA rates the 2020 Tesla Model Y performance at 30 kilowatt hours per 100 miles and a range of 291 miles. After 9,000 miles, we aren't even close to that average. We're closer to 41 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Now, yes, this Model Y has done way more drag races than your typical long-term vehicle, but this higher consumption is something we've also noticed with previous Teslas we've owned, like our first Model 3 and our Model X. The best range we've achieved is 263 miles after a full charge. But remember, the advertised range is 291 miles. Also remember that Tesla recommends charging to 90% of the battery, so your max range is actually gonna be 10% less than 291, advertised at least. In the real world, it's even worse. Not only that, but the range situation is different from what we see from other EV manufacturers who generally underreport their figures. We know because our EV rating process includes a real world drive loop. You can see the results at the link below. So our one-year ownership update is a bit mixed. We love the functionality and the performance, but we don't like the ride quality and those wheels. We love the charging infrastructure and the technology until it stops working. Would we recommend this car? We'd tell you to go look at a Ford Mustang Mach-E first, but there are still attributes about this Model Y that are worth close inspection. As for this particular car, we're probably gonna do some more drag races with it and hold on to it until our Cybertruck is ready which might be this year, hopefully, maybe. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, leave a comment below if you like this video, and if you don't, go for it too. Also like and subscribe and visit edmunds.com slash sellmycar to get an instant cash offer on your car.